Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining me. I'm Chip Cosby, and this is a CN2 Sports documentary. Only five teams in the glorious history of Kentucky High School basketball have won back-to-back -back state championships. Lexington High School was the first, winning three straight in 1918, 19, and 20, followed by Ashland in 1933 and 34, Seneca in 1963, 64, and Mayo in 1970 and 71. It's been nearly 21 years since the last team won two straight titles. Tonight, we'll take an up-close look at those last two teams with back-to-back -back championships, the 1990 and 91 Fairdale High School Bulldogs. Those teams were known for their brilliance on the court, but they were just as captivating off the floor. Together, these teammates were able to win it all twice, and they brought two very different communities together. But the road to victory was filled with twists and turns. Over the next hour, we'll take a look at everything that shaped the thrill ride that was Fairdale basketball in the 1990s. And we'll tell you what the key members of those teams are up to these days. Mo Morris, and Mo says it's time to take the Air Express for 21 points. Fairdale dusts Bryan Station 81-53 for a 27-4 record. This game was pitted as a matchup between three Mr. Basketball candidates. One of them is Fairdale's Jermaine Brown, who scored 15 while sitting out much of the first half. And Watch Jermaine Brown sky over everyone. He'll make the outlet pass to Turner. And this is why they're ranked number one in the state. It's Fairdale rolls over Tolls Grill tonight on the Yeah, well, Fairdale's so tough. They are. Oh, Ooh, I mean, they could one. bring eight or nine people in the ball game, and every one of them seemed to be a clone of the other one, and they just, yeah, they're, they're tough. Babe's going to be coming down on this. This is a very tough shot to stop. Yeah. Okay, so he had 23, and Fairdale beat Central 84-76. Fairdale's Jermaine Brown is going to say, son, this is how it's done. Should they again make it all the way to the state championship, they'll play nine games in postseason, giving them a total of 41 games this year. We'd have to check the record books, but that may be a high school record. Fairdale is a community located in southern Jefferson County. Longtime residents describe Fairdale as both a working class and close-knit community. Nearly 8,000 people live in Fairdale, with less than 1% of the population being African American. Ty Scroggins, who lettered in both football and basketball at Fairdale, grew up in Fairdale as one of only two black families in the neighborhood. I started my whole career was at Fairdale. I was born and raised out there. My parents were born and raised and my grandparents. Uh, and you know, me and Tony Elam were the only two black kids out there, two black families out there. So and it was tough at times, you know, we had to go through some of the, uh, some of the stuff with the Klan going down the street. The Southwick Community Center was located in the heart of the Southwick Projects in Louisville's West End. It was also where Jermaine Brown, Maurice Morris, and Carlos Turner grew up just a hop, skip, and a jump away from each other. Southwick was notorious for its crime, drugs, and gang activity, but like Fairdale, it was a close-knit community. Sports, particularly basketball, was an escape for Southwick youth. First thing, you know, people think about is, uh, you know, Southwick, you know, Projects, Ghetto, um, the crime, I mean, it was there, but you know, growing up in it, you know, you, I guess, I guess you didn't, you didn't see all that, especially at a young age, because you really wasn't involved in it or anything like that. You just, you know, we just pretty much played and had fun. You know, went to school and did what we had to do. I mean, you know, our parents did a good job of just, you know, we were poor, but you know, they they made us feel like we was the richest kids in the world. You know, we we had each other. It was a lot of love. You know, family bonds are strong where we come from. Uh, I mean, for the most part, I mean, I just, I had, you know, I only got fond memories of it. But we found a way of finding that avenue of playing basketball and playing all the time so we didn't have to deal with the other pressures of stress that was going to come no matter what you did. So for us, I mean, growing up, everybody grows up around poverty. In our neighborhood, it was poverty, drugs, craziness that was going on, but I think our passion was being the best in our neighborhood. The Southwood Community Center was overflowing with basketball talent at the time. In addition to Morris, Brown, and Turner, Southwick also produced Tony Wheat, the starting point guard on Fairdale's 1990 state title team, and Derek Anderson, who played at Dawson, went on to an 11-year NBA career, along with several other players who were standouts at local schools. By the time Brown and Morris were in the eighth grade, they were household names with every high school coach in the Louisville area. The city was abuzz over the two middle school phenoms who were throwing down dunks on a regular basis in Williams Middle School. Anderson, who was a year behind Brown and Morris, was the starting point guard on that team. That middle school team, to me, I've never seen like the other guys before. I'm sure they were great teams. 
But I've never seen a team like that at that young age dominate and have fun doing it. When Brown and Morris enrolled at Fairdale as ninth graders, the entire community knew the program could be on the verge of something special. When they came in here as freshmen, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, two of the greatest players and greatest kids, you know, and they're twice as good a people as they are players, and that's what makes it such a joy. I think I know what he's going to do most of the time, and he's going to know what I do. And I just, we just, like, you know, communicate, and we just know where each other's going to be at, some, you know, most of the time. I know a lot of times you'll say, man, where's he throwing the ball? And the next thing you know, one of the other ones will come out of the air, and there it is. Being as close as they are, Brown and Morris generally agree on most everything. But there is some disagreement as to how they first got to know each other. We had some kind of prize the teacher would give us, and she's like, I bet she gave us $3, right? And that day, Maurice had brought a, a little jar of Kool-Aid with sugar in it, you know. And he tried to, and he tried to calm me out of it. He tried to ask me to give him the money for that. I think it was a girl. He was messing with some girl. <laughs> I think he was messing with some girl in the fourth grade that, you know, <laughs> And I, you know, I was, you know, trying to talk to her too. So when they came here, uh, it just kind of up everybody's confidence in athletics roles when those two guys came. We knew good things were in store if we could keep everybody together and uh, develop some chemistry and some great uh, camaraderie among the team. Uh, we knew that things should be very special. We weren't sure it was going to come uh, their junior year, but it certainly did. They all started out together as freshmen. And that one bunch, and they just, it, you could just tell in the beginning that they were a unique bunch of kids and they were going to go somewhere. Here we just liked it as Mo Morris takes the Air Express. Oh man! Morris immediately cracked the starting lineup as a freshman. Maurice Morris with the pass and he assisted Jermaine Brown. Brown scored 16 big points. While Brown was the sixth man. Morris was a 6'2 left-hander whose basketball skill and physical maturity was beyond his years. As a young child, he was given the nickname Killer due to his prowess on the court. I was maybe four, five. I was yay big. I'm playing with kids 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's like, who is this kid? This kid I heard, you know, he could play. Oh, we gonna call him Killer, cause he's out there killing them. He's killing them. So I picked that up kind of before I even moved down there, yeah. and it just kind of stuck with me. And then Jermaine Brown puts the icing on the cake. Brown had not yet come into his own as a basketball player, but he was perhaps one of the most physically gifted athletes to ever come through the Bluegrass State. Before basketball season even started, he was asked to join the varsity football team after a couple of key players were injured. So the next day he came to practice, and on Friday night as a freshman, he was defensive back. He had, had two interceptions his very first game. Then it was time for basketball. On most teams, two freshmen coming in playing such key roles would upset the older veteran players. But the talent of Morris and Brown was evident. To be honest, we was just better. We was better than him. I mean, you know, and coach gave us the opportunity. It wasn't like when you came in, oh, you got the spot. We did work for what we got. Their talent was just unbelievable. I mean, just it was obvious. obvious, yes. And we had talent then as well. Um, but it was just obvious, and, and these guys were just gamers, man. <laughs> they came in and, and in practice and, um, you know, uh, games and just, I mean, it was unbelievable what they were, you know, as a freshman, what they were able to accomplish. Dogs turned to guys like Carlos Turner, 30 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, and 7 steals tonight. That's all one guy. The following year in 1989, Coach Harden anticipated the arrival of another freshman phenom in Carlos Turner a smooth six foot six player with guard skills. The Bulldogs were one of the state's top teams in 1989, but suffered a painful loss to PRP in the six region championship game. Harden and the players knew that 1990 would be their year. I mean, it hurt so bad. I mean, the whole team was just in the back, in the locker room, just balling, just crying. And it was like, man, you know, next year, man, we gonna win it all. We just gonna take state. But we knew we had the players. We knew we had a good core of kids. Uh, we knew that we all hung around. We knew each other's game. We knew chemistry. So it was just like, man, you know, we just going to make this work, and the next year we going we gonna to win state. And we said that in the locker room after that loss that night. 